Hi everyone, welcome, John here. Today's video we're going to be doing some uh, WordPress scraping. So we're going to be scraping uh, WordPress, which is like the most popular blogging platform. Uh, the website we're going to be doing is the Mozilla blog, which is the, the company that makes Firefox. Um, the best way to check what uh, platform the website you're using is on is to just go to view page source. Uh, if I zoom in a bit and if I go quick search we can see that the word WordPress pops up six times which means that this website is indeed running WordPress. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm approaching a scraping uh, challenge like this is to inspect element um, and we can see straight away that if we hover over all of the posts um, there's some div classes down here which look interesting posts grid and then within that articles so we can see we've got article with an ID and a class now each one has a different number which represents the post but that's okay because we can actually partially match the class and get all of the articles so now that we know that it is a WordPress site and that there is access to the uh, articles like this we can go over to our VS code and we can start writing code so let's go uh, import requests uh, and then let's set our URL let's copy that over paste that in there and let's set our headers so the headers we're going to use is the user agent so we're going to send a different user agent over than the default request one so we're going to identify ourselves as an actual browser as opposed to the requests um, library so if I go and let's google for one real quick uh, user agents this one will do uh, let's go on chrome copy the top one here there we go, and let's put that in our code. So now that we've got our URL set and our headers, we can do r is equal to requests.get and put in the URL and then headers is equal to headers. So what this is doing is this is, we're gonna be using requests and we're gonna do a get request to the server, which is this URL, which we set up here using the headers here of which is a Python dictionary for the user agent uh, which we are identifying as something along the lines of Chrome or Safari. Um, so hopefully we should not get any errors or any issues getting the information. So the next thing we want to do is I like to always print r.statescode and let's check that everything's working. We should get 200. We do. 200 is a good. Anything uh, 2xx is usually a good response. Uh, 3 is um, a redirect, usually 4. I think 404, which is... Uh, not found on the server and five is usually a general error or forbidden so check your status code and make sure everything's there before you try and proceed okay so now we want to have a look back at the website again and we can see that we have article IDs here with the class of post summary so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import beautiful soup 4 so from BS4 we can import beautiful soup and then we can create our soup variable to store the HTML in that we are going to pass. So I will do soup is equal to beautiful soup and then r.content I tend to use. You can use r.text as well. Features and we're going to say the lxml parser. If you don't put this in, it will still work. It will use a default one, but you just get an error every time you run the code in the terminal. So I always put this one in now. Okay, so let's go and try and find the articles. So let's do uh, articles is equal to soup.find all. So the reason why we want to use find all is because, as it suggests, we want to find all of the instances where this, uh, what we're going to put in here is found. If we just use find, it would only find the first one, or it would find the second one if we indexed it. But because we want to use find all, it's going to return all of it for us, and we could do it that way. So it's article, and then the class was post summary so we're looking for article which matches here and the class which matches here okay so now if we print our articles we should get a load of HTML come up down here there we go so we can see it all here so if I go up to the top the first one is post one two seven five three and somewhere in here we can see it. this looks like the link and 
all the other information there. So one, two, seven, five, three, which is the first one here. Okay, so we know that that's working. Now what we want to do is we want to loop through every individual article and pull out some of the information. So we want to do a for loop. So we'll do for item in articles. Now you can call this variable whatever you like. I always just tend to default to item. It doesn't matter as long as you follow it all the way through. So now we would want to do, let's do title is equal to item.find. Now we're using find in this one because we want to find it as opposed to find a list. So if we were to put something in here that had, um, say within the article HTML, there was multiple H1 tags and we were searching for H1 tags. This would respond if we did find all with all of them, the list of them. What we want to do is we just want to find the first one. Now, normally the first one is the actual information that we're after. So that's okay. If not, we can, as I said, we can use indexes to get the information if for whatever example, say the title is in an H1, but something else underneath that is in an H1 and we want that as well. We would still do find, but we would index it. So we would do, let's say it was called H1. Say we wanted the first one, we could just do this and we can get the first one. But if we also wanted to access the second H1 tag, we can just put a one at the end like this. But let's go and find where the title is. So we can use the find tool. Uh, this is the title that we want. So it's actually an H2 with a class of entry title. So that makes it really easy for us because we can look for all the, the H2 tag with this class. So I'm gonna copy the title, uh, the class, sorry. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna put in, we know it's an H2 tag, H2. And then again, class. Remember to put the underscore underneath when you're searching for a class. If you don't wanna do it this way, you can do it in a dictionary. I believe it's like this. Uh, h2 and then put your class in I think that works as well we'll just we'll t find out right now so if we print title we should get all of, uh, all of them back okay there we go so it does work so you can do it like this or alternatively you can do it like I did here article and then class with the underscore so we'll leave that in for now so what else do we want to get out of this? So we definitely, I'm going to say we want the date because that's quite important. So again, this is uh, in a time block with a class of date published. So let's see if that works. So let's do date is equal to item.find. Again, we're just using find and we'll do, uh, it said it was time and the class was that and we'll do dot text and let's print title and date. And hopefully we get the information back. Okay, there we go. If I, we can look here, we've got the title and then the date in text form because here, you can just about see that underneath there, uh, we had the date in the text, August the 6th. So that's what we've got out. So we could also get the author, that looks like here. So again, it is, it's an A tag this time um, with the class of author url and fn so let's go and so this one would actually work as well the address with the class of v card because there's nothing else in here apart from this a tag which has the text in so we could use this one so we want to do let's move this down and out of our way author is equal to item.find and we said it was uh, address and the class was V card, I believe. And again, dot text to get the text information from that. So then let's do author. I've missed out some brackets there. Put those in and run that. Okay, and we can see if we just look at this one here, we've got the author at the end of the text chain there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the link to the, um, to the article as well. So if we look here, we've got this read more, but also the title is a link and there's the picture is a link. Uh, so let's just go ahead and find one that has the link here. So we can see this whole one is uh, a tag with a class of entry link, uh, which is basically the main link to the rest of the article. So let's go ahead and copy that and put in here a uh, link is equal to item.find because we're going to find this specific one again. And um, we're doing a and it was entry link and then here if we put link and after we call for the link here we can actually just put href 
and that will get us the um, actual link to the article. There we go. So we can see this one here. Um, this one has got the link to the end of it there. So now we've got all of that information. We would want to put that into a CSV file or something like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and I always like to use pandas for that. So let's import pandas as PD, which is a standard. Hey guys, I realized I just made a bit of a mistake on this part. Um, when exporting to CSV, because our data has double quotation marks around the link, it actually missed lines and I ended up missing some data, which I didn't realize. To avoid this, do um, export to Excel. So do uh, pandas.2 Excel. Uh, and that will work just fine in this example. Uh, so just bear that in mind when I'm going through the rest of it. And then let's create ourselves a new list. So let's call this article list and create ourselves a blank list. You can lose, use link comprehension to do this, but I just find this a nice and easy way, especially for explaining it. So now we just need to turn this all into a dictionary that we can save into our data frame. Uh, the easiest way to do this um, is just to create a new one called, uh, let's say, uh, I don't really want to call it article, we could call it article like this. And then we just create our dictionary and we'll just do title is the title variable that we've got there and then date the date excuse me date and the author author and the link is like this link link so just remember to put commas after when each one of these otherwise you'll get an error and at the end of this we can do uh, article list dot append and then append our article to it so what this is going to do is that every time it loops through this and gets this information it's going to save it into this article dictionary and then we're appending that dictionary to the list that we started up here so we will basically end up with a list of dictionaries so i always like to add a little print statement at here just so i can see and check things are working and i'm struggling to spell article today there we go okay so now if we want to export this all to a csv um, we can do use pandas so i've got import pandas as pd now here at the top pd being the standard and outside of our main loop so i'm just going to collapse this now we want to create our data frame so df which is data frame you can call this whatever you like is equal to pd for the pandas that we just imported data frame all in uh, note the capitals and then our article list that we created. Okay, so what that's gonna do is it's gonna take our article list, which has got every line, and it's gonna turn it into a pandas data frame for us. And then we can export that to CSV nice and easily by going df.2 CSV, and then let's call it uh, article list.csv. And outside of that, we're gonna do index is equal to false so we don't get the extra index on the side. Uh, we just use the CSV lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so we've got added all of our articles and here we've got a CSV file with a title, data, author and a link. Sorry, the date, that should be date, not data. And we can see we've got the title, the date, the author, and then the link to the article. So we're just gonna go ahead and write date instead of data, because that's not right. And then I'm going to add a print statement at the end, just saying uh, saved to CSV. Okay, so that's the basic scraper done. Uh, the ways we would expand on this is that we would turn these all into functions. So we would create three functions for our uh, request, our pass, and our output. And we would also work with dealing with the pagination. So the pagination is quite simple in the fact that when you go to the next page, we can see that the URL changes page slash to up here. You might not be able to see that, it's quite small. But you can see, if I just paste it down here, we've got slash two. So you would wanna do an F string and paste the number that you want in for each of the pages. But I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, we've covered requesting the information from a URL. Uh, we've used custom headers with a user agent. We've created our soup variable and we've looped through all of the articles on the page and we've used a different method, two different methods for selecting the 
HTML tags and we've dealt with getting the href from the link. So hopefully you guys have found this useful. Next time round I'll, I'll expand on this and we'll do a part two where we tidy it all up and make it look a bit better and make it work easier and run through all the pages. So that's it for now. Thanks guys. See you later. Bye.